the training phase of an AI model is perhaps one of the most communications intensive portions of the whole process. So let's train our own AI model here. Let's talk about the steps that we'll need to go through. So the very first thing we want to do is collect the data that's used for our model. That's called a training set. And a training set is a very large amount of data which we have acquired from different sources. One of the most common sources is called the common crawl. It's all of the internet pages ever indexed up to a certain point in time. We can use proprietary data, so books, news articles, really anything we can get our hands on that we can license. We can put internet forums in there. We can have, uh, if you're meta, for example, you're probably using Facebook data and Instagram data to train your model. So in addition to this data that we acquire, we can also generate data that's called synthetic data. So this is, we actually generate answers to questions that, of course, we know the answer to. And so in this way, we can provide a higher quality model by giving the model uh, questions and answers which we know to be 100% accurate. And that ends up increasing the quality of all of the answers across the entire training set. So once we have our training set established, we then go into a process of, of cleaning and processing that data. Of course, it's highly unstructured at this point in time. So we want to go through and start to uh, add some structure to that data so that it's easier for our uh, model training process. It's, it's, we get a much high, higher quality output when we've cleaned that data. Just like any sort of data you might use in your enterprise, we want to go through that uh, ETL process to get the data normalized. From there, we go through the process of tokenization. So we, we effectively say that we chop up all of that data into words and portions of words and chunks of information. And in this way, we can start to uh, understand the relationships between the words. Ultimately, when it heads out to the GPU infrastructure in just a moment, that GPU infrastructure is going to start to form the relationships between all of these chunks of data. So an example of that is, uh, that I use is the word Azure. So to me, that means two different things. It's a variation of the color blue, and it's also a Microsoft product. And so when I ask a model a question, I'm going to want it to know whether I'm talking about the Microsoft product or whether I'm talking about the color blue. And that's a context, uh, context clues, as we say, right? And so the process of chunking that up and understanding the relationships between them is a key part of the inference process. So now we're going to take this uh, tokenized data that's been all prepared for our training process, and we're going to deploy it to our GPUs. Now, we can do this on a single GPU. Uh, if that GPU has enough memory for our data set. But most likely this data set is so huge that we're going to want to chop it up and place portions of it on a number of different GPUs. Up to many tens of thousands of GPUs can be used for the largest models. So these GPUs, when they get the data, they go through the process of performing matrix multiplication on the data which is inside. And when they've completed that process, they then need to exchange their local computations with all the other GPUs in the network in, in its simplest form. And we can't do that until every GPU is ready, until every GPU has completed their calculations on their data, then we can exchange data with one another. So this particular point gets into one of the most challenging pieces of designing a backend for the AI training function. And that is that the communications patterns look a lot like this. We have quiet for a while while the GPUs are doing their calculations, and then we have a massive amount of elephant flows, giant flows of data which are being passed back and forth from GPUs all at the same time. And of course, every one of these GPUs has the same speed network interface, so that if we're trying to, we're in a situation where many GPUs are sending to a single GPU to exchange information, there's going to be contention in the network. We're going to lose information because there's simply not enough bandwidth to make those transmissions. So managing this traffic, managing the contention in the network, is a key part of designing a network for uh, the AI training function. And we have a, uh, an episode about that coming up shortly. So once these GPUs have performed their calculations, that process, by the way, can take anywhere from just a few minutes for a small model on your laptop all the way to several months or more for the very largest models. Once we've done that, then we can egress our model and go test it and make sure that it does exactly what we want it to do. So this, this entire process is uh, directly relates to the type of networks that we build for the AI backend. 
Now, I want to, uh, to, to point out something that I talked about before, which is this idea of communications collectives. So those communications collectives uh, come in many different forms. There's some that are sort of broadcasts, you know, one to many, and then you've got uh, all reduce, which means everyone uh, gives all of their information to another station. So these communications collectives are uh, what the data scientists are operating on. Remember, I said that they don't really think about a single GPU or a single IP address. These folks are thinking about uh, banks of data, and they're not thinking about individual network elements. So these communications collectives are what ultimately allow the GPUs to exchange information uh, at the same time. And that's where we get that contention, right? We have, we have a couple different problems that we identify. We have names for them. We have an in-cast problem, which is when many different GPUs are all trying to send to a single GPU at the same time. If every one of these is a 400 gig interface, so that I have uh, 1.6 terabits of information that are trying to flow to a single 400 gig interface here, I simply don't have enough room for all of that data to come in. Uh, the second problem, which can propagate through the network uh, in uh, larger design patterns, is head aligned blocking. So it's not the problem that lives here at the end station. It's actually something that might live in the spine or in one of the far leaves of the network because I simply don't have enough bandwidth in the center part of the network. This is a classic problem that we've had in, in the internet for a, a long time that we try to alleviate through network design and congestion control. So these two problems, headcast and, uh, in-cast and headline blocking, are the two things that we need to design into our networks, the capability to alleviate and mitigate whenever we possibly can.